Today I'm getting back into our outdoor garden and it was supposed to be a lot warmer today. It was supposed to be in the 60s, but it does not feel like the 60s here in Wisconsin. Right now it says it's about 52. It feels a lot colder than that. We have the wind coming out of the east, which means it's coming off of Lake Michigan, which is cool and it carries a little bit of that dampness with it. And oh, it really gets you to the bone. And coming off of that 80 degree weather week from spring break with the kids, this just feels like a punishment of some sort. <laughs> but the sun's gonna come out today, so hopefully that sun will kind of heat up and warm up our area just a little bit and it'll make it a lot easier to get some of this work done. Um, and it's not so much work that has to get done. It's really a start of some sort that I really want to get started so I don't feel like everything happens all at once in the garden. That's kind of how I kind of create this schedule to turn out because I do not want to get stressed or any type of anxiety because that can easily happen. You know, as soon as it gets warm, we're like, we got a million things to do outside and then we're not truly enjoying it in that moment. So if you gradually kind of place out, you know, your garden chores, it, it can really end up being an enjoyable process rather than a stressful process. So today what I'm really getting started is a new strawberry patch. So I'm really excited for it because um, we didn't have a patch last year. We had to get rid of all of our old strawberry plants. They don't last forever. And I really slacked on making sure that I was prepared for that moment when our plants would be done. So I didn't have new plants to carry on a new year to harvest some great strawberries. And so what we did is we went ahead and ordered some quite a few months ago and they just shipped them, I'd say at the beginning of the week. So they've been sitting around a little bit and I don't want them to sit around anymore. The only thing that held me back was the rain this week, but we have no rain right now. Even though I've got a hat on to keep my little ears warm, we still got to roll with it. Oh, look at Fuzzy over here. Fuzzy, you're going crazy? What are you doing, kiddo? Come here. Oh, little Fuzz. She's going crazy because she hears the birds. She knows she smells some mice. You need to get after those mice for me. Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> So you guys re may remember these two beds as our strawberry beds, but we pulled them out and so now we have lavender that's now returning. This is the Sweet Romance Lavender. It's a proven winter variety. It was from Walter's Gardens. And then over here we planted small little plants, the little plug plants. I call them the garden poppers. This is all sweet grass here. So this is the first year it's returning and it's multiplied, which is absolutely amazing and it's so beautiful. Look at how gorgeous this is. It's so pretty and it's so fragrant. It smells so sweet, almost perfume-like. And I just absolutely love it. It's just the cutest little thing. I would love to have an entire lawn of just sweet grass. So every time it got mowed, it would smell so sweet and good. Over here in this really messy garden, <laughs> this is what I'm cleaning up today. So right on the end over here, we just added some wild flowers last year, some little cut flowers. Um, like they were just like the cut and come again zinnias, um, verbena bonariensis, borage, um, however you want to pronounce that. You know, we all have our own ways, but you know what I mean. And then over here, these strawberries we've had for a long time. Obviously strawberries get weeds in the middle of them. These are the pineberry strawberries right here that we've been growing here forever. And they just aren't producing as well anymore. So we're just gonna accept the fact that they're basically done. The raised bed soil has really settled and it has sunk. And the other day we did get a big low dropped off of garden mixture soil so which is compost and topsoil mixed and then they sift it nice and fine for you so what we're gonna do in here is just pull everything out and then I'm gonna lay some cardboard down wet that down and then lay the soil on top and this entire bed here will be our new strawberry patch so I was kind of contemplating on that garden and kind of wondering should I just add in another one of our lavender gardens right there but 
I kind of want to keep the fruit close to the house. The things that we eat the most of that we can snack on, I want to keep that close to the house. I don't want to keep that out in a far away garden bed. And this is the most longest, largest bed we have to allow these strawberries to grow and then run off of that. Over here is our raspberry patch. So it'd be kind of nice to have our strawberries right next door here. And um, that way we can snack with the kids whenever. So I'm just gonna go through and just cut these runners halfway down. That allows them to really just focus on the growth of the main plant. And then it also forces them to really bush out, which actually creates more production. This is the way that we've always done it. If you have your own way and it works for you, I always say stick with what works for you, but this is just, you know, us sharing what we do and how we do it and what works for us. And we've been growing these raspberries here for, I'd say about four years now. And last year we actually added just a couple more in here um, just to kind of help them grow in even more and suppress some of these weeds, which did help, but we have some weeds to pull as well. I've got my little helper with me. <laughs> She's sick today. <laughs> she didn't feel good, so I had to pick her up from school, but uh, she feels good to help now, right? You feeling a little better? Yeah, aw. So if she's feeling better, I mean, school's almost over. I'm like, you know what? You're, you can come out and help me then because there's there's a lot to do. And these little hands, they can help me get the things closest to the ground, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we came up to the front of the house to grab the cardboard. And as you can see, I got some work here too. But what I wanted to show you was the pretty spring flowers. So I did get some hyacinths and daffodils, which the hyacinths are in blossom. Aren't those just super pretty? I can smell them. They smell so sweet and fragrant. And then some of the beautiful little daffodils are in blossom. Look how gorgeous those are. Aren't those just the cutest little thing? They just feel so, so pure and just sweet. And they smell sweet. I love the pastel orange on them. It's almost like an apricot. They just look so adorable. But there's also a tulip that will be coming too. So I did a mixture. So that way there would be some blossoming at different times. So the front yard garden is one I want to get cleaned up as soon as possible. So you can really notice what's in blossom here because I took time in the fall to do that. And if you have it mixed with all this dead stuff, you can't really enjoy and see the beauty of what's going on here. So, what'd you find? Ooh. Oh, wow. That's cool, Sayla. So, we have a list today of things that we need to get done. And when you walk around the place, you can just really see so many things that need to get done to where, like I was talking about earlier, it can start feeling like overwhelming or stressful. So, I always just am like, I have my list. All of this other stuff will get done, but today we're tackling the list. You can only do so much. So I made sure my list consisted of what I could get done today and what's the most important. So that's what we're gonna focus on. This can be this weekend. I definitely want this to be this weekend, but setting up a real schedule is so important if you have a really large garden and a lot of maintenance and a lot of spring cleanups. That way you get to enjoy your spring rather than worry about the next thing. So anything that you pops up into your head and you're like, oh, I gotta do that too, write it down. Cause a lot of times we focus and put more stress on something because we're afraid to forget to do it. So if it's written down, then there's no way that you can forget to do it. And you'll feel a lot less stress, less anxiety. Cause you're like, it's on the list. 
it will get done because it's on the list so I don't have to worry about it anymore. And that's kind of how we run it here. Well, it seems I lost my helper to a nap. I think she, uh, I think Sayla came out here thinking she was fine and she realized pretty quickly that uh, she wasn't feeling as good as she thought. So <laughs> she's in there taking a nap. She's all settled down. So I'm going to get back to doing a few things and um, next is the cardboard for that strawberry garden. So what I have to first do is take all the tape off. That was something I was hoping her little hands could do, but that's okay. So um, that's what I'm doing now. It's a boring task. I'll show you probably like a two second clip because I don't want you guys to fall asleep today. So I got this cardboard from my family's garden center. They get a lot of shipments in of their trays and pots that they grow a lot of their plants in. And I really take a lot of their trash and I'm making my treasures in my own garden because <laughs> it's so useful. You can really just reuse so many different things and a lot of what they get in and that they don't reuse, I reuse. So. I'm using these little garden stakes. We use a lot of these when we start a new garden space for weed barrier. And what's really nice is we really don't have to buy a lot of new uh, ones of these because once the gravel's on there, it holds the weed barrier down. Or once the mulch goes on there, it holds the weed barrier down. And after a winter, these start popping up because the ground freezes and thaws, freezes and thaws, and it pops these guys up. So when it pops them up, we just take them out because they're really no longer needed once that weight is already on there and it's established. So when we pull them out, we get to use them for other projects. So I'm using these today to hold the cardboard down mainly because it's so windy as soon as I have the soil on them I don't have to worry about the cardboard moving all around but I still have to get it laid down and then I want to water it so it's nice and soaked and then we'll put the soil on top so next winter these can these can and pr most likely will pop up out of there and then uh, we'll use them again for something else You're probably wondering why am I going through all of this trouble of adding the cardboard, but overall adding the cardboard is a lot easier than having to yank all of these plants out and go through all of that trouble because I'd really have to till it and then go through it and work all of the um, old plants out, which you don't work them all out. So what the cardboard is acting as is a natural weed barrier so it will eventually compost into the soil but cardboard is also a really great worm bedding so it's going to bring a lot more worms to that area so when we plant go ahead and plant our strawberry plants they're going to have a lot of that what we call worm castings which is basically worm poop but that's one of the best things to have in your gardens it, it levels out the pH within the soil. It gives the plant what it needs. It also protects it from a lot of different diseases and um, fungus and it aerates the soil. It also fertilizes the soil. And it's just absolutely amazing to have the worms in your garden. So for those of you who are grossed out by the worms, just keep in mind, you know, that they are good. Just like how I am super scared of spiders. If I see a spider, I will scream like a little schoolgirl because they are creepy, but they are awesome in the garden, you know? So I always just, I'm kind of like, I'm aware of them, but then I'm like, all right, I am not going to be hanging out next to that chair if you're on it because they are so scary, but they're good, you know? So um, there's always something that comes with the good. But another way that you can do this is we did this with our other two beds where I had showed you earlier with the strawberries, our old strawberry beds that are now the lavender and the sweet grass. So what we did was in June, that June when we decided that we could no longer keep those plants because they weren't producing, um, we actually went ahead and laid weed barrier down and we left that weed barrier on top of those beds all season until probably around, I would say that it was more in like, mid-August and mid-August maybe even September 
um, we rolled those off and underneath it turned into be uh, it turned into becoming the most beautiful black dirt ever um, and everything was gone underneath and we just went ahead and planted what we needed to plant in those beds and they turned out to be absolutely amazing and then we just topped them off with some additional mulch just to hold in that moisture and to kind of protect them over the winter so there's many different ways of really doing what you need to do in order to suppress those weeds or take care of old garden beds and start fresh um, so you do what works for you but we always love to be able to share you know what we're doing and and how we're doing it but there's so many different ways to do what we do in the garden what you're doing in the garden so sometimes it's just fun to see what other people are doing and how they do it so I had to run over here though to the greenhouse to open it up because once it gets sunny it gets like a sauna in there and I don't want it to get too hot because the bunnies are in there but if it does end up getting too hot we'll have to uh, carry the bunnies out of there and put them into their outdoor enclosure for the day. By watering it, it softens the cardboard, makes it soggy, makes it stay in place, basically sets it up to start composting, especially when there's soil underneath. Once we put soil on top, it'll be easy to plant. With how much soil we have to add into these boxes, I mean, that's a good five inches to where we may not need to go through the cardboard. So we'll see how that goes. So now I'm moving on to probably my least favorite job in the garden. Can you guys guess what that is? Shoveling soil. I absolutely do not like this job at all. This is usually a job that Jason does for me. He says he likes it, but I don't know how. <laughs> it is not a fun job. I am in no way afraid of physical labor, which I think you guys have already realized from just, you know, visiting here on the channel. But, you know, I I've been doing physical labor since a child, so my body feels a lot older than it is. So shoveling soil is not a workout for me. For me, shoveling soil is like another year older on the body. <laughs> it is just, it's a lot. Um, and we don't always have to add more soil to the beds like every year or anything like that. It's just that the beds have really settled in the past three years. Ladies, you got this. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I, I can't say I don't appreciate Jason though because uh, I'd much rather have him do it, but we can still do this. We got this. For now, this bed, all the other beds, he's got this. Well, you're in shape until you realize that you are not in shape. All right, I got it done, you guys. It looks nice and it's ready for strawberries. So I should put some mulch down before I plant, but I do not have mulch on hand and I need to get these berries in the ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to plant them first and then I'll add mulch later once we have a chance to get it. The mulch will help with suppressing any new weeds, that drop their seeds or that may possibly be within this soil here. And it will also help it retain water because we do go through a lot of dry spells here. So I got my strawberries in from Jung and the ones that I picked are ones that I can't even pronounce the name. So I do know that I picked them due to the fact that they are June bearing and they are said to be one of the sweetest larger berries uh, for in our zone here in Wisconsin. We are zone five. 
so this is how they basically come in and you want to keep them nice and cool if you're not planting them the day that they arrive so what we're going to do is kind of break that band around them and i am going to go ahead and cut some of the roots um, this is how we've always done it since i planted them um, since a kid um, we don't just plant them as just like that when we when we get them um, oop, there's a little one in there um, so really what we do is we just basically go in there and just cut them right to there and then we plant them we just make sure that the green part is sticking up any dead parts uh, like old leaves or whatever get cut off and you just want to make sure that this you know lively part right on the top there is um, above the soil. I'm just going to go through and cut them first. I place them out all evenly, then I'm going to go ahead and plant them, and then once I get mulch on hand, then I'll go ahead and I'll mulch them. What's really nice is that the soil is nice and deep above that cardboard. So as I'm planting these, I am not even hitting the cardboard. So that's pretty neat. So as they grow and the cardboard kind of suppresses those weeds and it like naturally composts into there and adds a lot of worms, it's gonna be a beautiful, bountiful garden. And I'm super excited because we missed our own strawberries last year. Luckily, my sister grew a big patch, so we didn't go without, but it's always amazing to grow your own. The last step is watering, and then we're done. <laughs> 